joining me now, the leader of the United States Senate, Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer of New York. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. I know you just had a chance to meet with President Zelensky in Ukraine. You're now back across the border in Poland. As Russia is making battlefield gains right now in this, the two-year anniversary of the war, what did President Zelensky tell you about Ukraine's urgent need for U.S. military aid? Well, Wolf, he told us he's a very strong man. He's um, dedicated to keeping Ukraine free. And he told us two things very simple. He said, if we get the aid, if Ukraine gets the aid, and we vote for the supplemental package, they will win the war. They have the troops. They still have a, a great plan. And they have much better fighting ability than the Russians. But he said, if we don't get the supplemental and the ammo we need, which includes uh, anti-aircraft defense, which includes long-range artillery, which includes uh, dealing with the mining, the remote mining uh, pro pro uh, program to deal with the Russian mines and dealing with long more long-distance uh, missiles, that they will lose. It was very simple. The pa if we get the package, they will win. If they don't get the package, they will lose. And if they lose, Wolf, the consequences to the West are enormous. Our allies will think we will not stick with them anymore. It'll be of great hurt to NATO and Europe. And autocrats, worst of all, autocrats will feel they can push the U.S. around. This aid is essential. We went because we felt an obligation to go. We felt this was not just a nice thing to do, but it, there was a moral obligation to go. And one more thing, Wolf. We need Speaker Johnson to step up to the plate. We need Speaker Johnson to make sure that we get that aid. If he put the bill on the floor, it would pass. There are a good number of Republicans in the House who know how important it is. And he has to see that history is on his back. He cannot uh, have obeisance to Donald Trump. He has to do the right thing here. And uh, we're going to make that point to him because we got in great detail how Ukraine will win if they get the aid, but how they won't win if they lose. One of the Americans said to us, of course, we saw our people there, that if we, oops, sorry, that if we don't get the aid, the um, Ukrainians could, the Russians could be at the Polish border within a year. Do you know when you'll have a chance to relay all of these messages, really important message, messages to the speaker? Uh, I know you're going to try to persuade the speaker to bring this additional U.S. military aid bill to the House floor. Yes. The first thing we believe is that Johnson should do what we did. Speaker Johnson could come to Ukraine. If he just spends a day with President Zelensky, we went with the new general in charge. This is the general who, who won in Kiev and won in Kharkiv, and now he's in charge, and he's a really formidable man. We met with him. If he meets with the leading generals, if he meets with Zelensky, if he meets with the Americans on our side, he will, it, there'll be no way he won't be convinced that we need this aid. And he shouldn't have some sort of blind obeisance uh, to Donald Trump. He has to do the right thing. Uh, but we will communicate all of this to him. We're going to figure out the best way possible to do it. The evidence is overwhelming, overwhelming. And one other thing. Some of the right-wing Republicans are saying, oh, even with the aid, the war will go on forever. That is just not true. The Ukrainians will really gain. They were gaining until they stopped getting. The only reason they've lost these towns uh, lately is because they, the, uh, they don't have the ammunition. We were told that if they had the ammunition, um, they wouldn't have lost the, the, a couple of the towns that they've lost. But the Russians can fire at 25 kilometers. Without the ammunition, the Ukrainians can only fire at 15 kilometers. So the Russians can hit them, but they can't hit back. It's a very bad situation. Very bad indeed. Uh, uh, Senator, uh, today, as you probably know, President Biden here in Washington announced uh, more than 500 new sanctions on Russia tied to this anniversary of the war uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the death of Alexei Navalny. How exactly does the U.S. prevent Russia from evading these sanctions and further isolate Putin from leaders beyond just the West? 
Well, first, the uh, sanctions are very important. This is, this is a big step forward because we're learning how the Russians evade them and trying to plug those holes. This won't be the end of it, I am sure. There's more that we can do. We must show Putin that he has, can pay a price, um, an economic price, as well as a political price and, an, and a military price. The best way, by the way, to show him uh, the, what he did to, to, to get at, to, 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 to punish him for what he did uh, for Navalny is to get the aid passed. And that aid will really put Putin uh, behind the eight ball. Yeah, that's critically important right now. I want to get to another important issue while I have you, Senator. As you know, three Alabama clinics have now paused in vitro fertilization services after the state Supreme Court in Alabama ruled that embryos are children. You've condemned this, so will you pursue specific federal legislation to protect access to in vitro fertilization services? Well, first, this shows that there is a Republican war on women, that they won't stop even at a national abortion ban, which they are very much for, but they'll go against other rights of women. We are going to explore every way that we can undo uh, what the Alabama court uh, did and uh, do everything we can to stop it. But anyone, make no mistake about it, if Republicans get in charge, they will push for a national abortion ban and they will hurt many other rights from women.